RAS to solve the system by writing an augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. For a quick review, if the system has one solution, the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form will be in this form here, where we have a diagonal of ones and zeros above the ones in the upper right hand corner, as well as zeros below the ones in the lower left hand corner. Again, this is when we have one solution. When trying to write the augmented matrix in this form though, if we end up with a row of zeros, we have infinite solutions. The third possibility is when we have three elements that are zeros in one row, as well as a constant on the right that's a non-zero, then we have no solution. But again, our goal is going to be to try to write the augmented matrix in this form here on the left. So going back to the problem, first notice how all the equations are in standard form, meaning the x, y, and z terms are on the left, and the constants are on the right and therefore the equations are in the correct form to write the augmented matrix. Before we do this though, let's write in the missing coefficients. The coefficient of x is one, the coefficient of z is negative one because of the subtraction. In the third equation, the coefficient of x is one, the coefficient of y is one. And now we write the augmented matrix. Each row comes from the coefficients of the variables as well as the constant on the right which means the first row is one, two, negative one, negative 10. The second row is two, negative three, two, two. And the third row is one, one, three, zero. And now I'll perform row operations to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Let's begin by obtaining a zero in this position as well as this position. Looking at row one and row two, notice how if we multiply row one by negative two and then add it to row two, we will get a zero in this position since negative two times one plus two is zero. And therefore we'll begin by replacing row two with negative two times row one plus row two and now looking at row two and row three, notice how they multiply row three by negative two and add it to row two, we will get a zero in this position here in row three. And this is because negative two times one plus two is zero. So we'll also replace row three with negative two times row three plus row two. Row one remains the same. Now we replace row two with negative two times row one plus row two. To begin, we have negative two times one plus two, which is zero. Next, we have negative two times two plus negative three, which is equal to negative four plus negative three, which is negative seven. Next, we have negative two times negative one plus two, which is two plus two or four. And then we have negative two times negative 10 plus two, which is equal to 20 plus two or 22. And now we replace row three with negative two times row three plus row two. Negative two times one plus two is zero. Negative two times one plus negative three is negative five. Negative two times three plus two is negative four. And negative two times zero plus two is two. Notice how in column three we have positive four and negative four here. So to get a zero in this position, which is row two, column three, let's replace row two with row two plus row three. And let's also get a zero in this position here. To do this, we wanna use row two, not row one, because if we use row one, we'll lose the zero here in row three, column one. The least common multiple of five and seven is 35. So let's replace row three with negative five times row two. Notice that would give us negative five times negative seven or positive 35 plus seven times row three. Seven times row three will give us a negative 35 since seven times negative five is negative 35. So again, the first row remains the same. Now we replace row two with row two plus row three. Zero plus zero is zero. Negative seven plus negative five is negative 12. Four plus negative four is zero. 
and 22 plus 2 is 24. And now we replace row 3 with negative 5 times row 2 plus 7 times row 3. To begin, negative 5 times 0 plus 7 times 0 is still 0. Next we have negative 5 times negative 7 plus 7 times negative 5, which is equal to 35 plus negative 35 or 0. Next we have negative 5 times 4 plus 7 times negative 4, which is equal to negative 20 plus negative 28 or negative 48. And then finally we have negative 5 times 22 plus 7 times 2, which is equal to negative 110 plus 14, which is negative 96. So notice how row 2 and row 3 look good, except the first non-zero element is not 1. So let's replace row 2 with negative 1 12th times row 2. That will give us a 1 in row 2, column 2. And let's replace row 3 with negative 1 48th times row 3. Let's also work on getting a zero in this position here, row one, column two. Looking at row one and row two, notice six times two plus negative 12 is zero. Let's replace row one with six times row one plus row two. So replacing row one with six times row one plus row two, we have six times one plus zero, which is six. Next we have six times two plus negative 12, which is zero. Next we have six times negative one plus zero, which is negative six. And finally we have six times negative 10 plus 24, which is negative 36. Replacing row two with negative one twelfth times row two, we have zero, one, zero, negative two. Replacing row three with negative one forty-eighth times row three, we have zero, zero, one, and two. We're almost there. We need a zero in row one, column three here. So looking at row one and row three, notice six times one plus negative six is zero. We will now replace row one with six times row three plus row one. So going back up to the top, we have six times zero plus six, which is six. And then we have six times zero plus zero, which is still zero. And then we have six times one plus negative six, which is zero. And we have six times two plus negative 36, which is 12 plus negative 36 or negative 24. Row two and row three remain the same. We have one more step here. We need a one in row one, column one. Let's replace row one with one sixth times row one. One sixth times six is one. One sixth times zero is zero here as well as here. One sixth times negative 24 is equal to negative four. Row two and row three remain the same. We now have the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. And notice how we do have one solution. Remember the first column gives the coefficients of x, the second column gives the coefficients of y, the third column gives the coefficients of z. So looking at the first row, we have 1x equals negative 4, or x equals negative 4. In the second row we have 1y equals negative 2, or y equals negative 2. In the third row we have 1z equals 2, or z equals 2. The solution is often given as an order triple, which would be negative four comma negative two comma two. I hope you found this helpful.